Cheers. Back, Back at, at it. it. It's a nice uh, peppermint, peppermint lemon tea. Peppermint and lemon decaf tea. Yeah. With a little bit of honey. A little splash of honey. Fire. Ties it off nicely. Yeah. On top of that, like, I'll do this with uh, glycine mm. and holy basil to top off the night. Is your holy basil in liquid form? No, or? it's a pill. Okay. It's a pill. Mine's like a droplet bottle. That's, I've heard that one's better. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've never tried the pills, but like, just I mean, mix it in with thing. some water at the end of that. Yeah. And, um, What's the milligram dose of a drop, does it say? Uh, it just says 20 drops. Oh, okay. I didn't look at like that yeah. detailed at it. Yeah, yeah. It's like a small bottle, you know? So yeah. I put, you know, I will fill up the droplet and it gets like 15 drops and then I'll bring it back for a little more and put a couple more in. Yeah. You know? Have you noticed like significant changes in your sleep? To be honest, I've, and this could entirely be like my like external circumstances affecting me, but right. I've been finding it really hard to fall asleep on time. Right. And I've been having some crazy dreams. Ever since you started the Holy Basil. Right around that time. Yeah. But yeah, I wonder what that is. At the same time, like right when I started taking the Holy Basil was like when I found out that my dad was coming in town and staying at our house. Oh yeah. And so like he's yeah. here now. Right. And like staying at the house. Yeah. And so like I know that's that that's gotta be fucking yeah. with my Yeah, I know that you, you mentioned know. for a while you were kinda dreading this, so Yeah, man. But at the same time, yeah. Like there's a lot of unresolved issues there. And right. so I made myself a promise that like before my dad leaves, he and I are gonna have a conversation. Yeah. I got a lot of questions yeah. that I need answered. Yeah. Do I you, at least need to ask them. Should you do it on a podcast? Fuck no. No way. No way. <laughs> Dude, that might be an epic podcast. That might be an epic story. I don't think he would be he uh, do it. Yeah. I don't think he would be Yeah as inclined to answer honestly I gotcha. yeah, yeah, you know yeah. because if it's your first time go, you know yeah, like, yeah. he's never done anything like yeah, that before right, so like right, right. to put him on the spot like that and, right yeah. and for him to know yeah. that it's going to be like his like a couple of his siblings listen to the podcast yeah right, so right. Like, that makes sense yeah i don't and, know but yeah for you to be like hey let's have a chat on my podcast and then hit him with like some hard questions right that would be fucked up yeah, yeah. and yeah. like i don't want to like we would have to do that at my house and, right. Like, right i don't want to would be there Right, so like I want to like go, although now fucking everything's shut down again. So like I don't know how, but like yeah. somewhere we're not at the house where it's yeah. just me and him and we can fucking talk. That's a good idea. That's a good idea, man. There's just some shit that I'm not gonna. That's like the one major aspect of my life that I have yet to confront. Right. And it was significant. Your, your dad, yeah. The trauma your dad has caused, both of them. Both. Yeah. They're intertwined. Yeah. Right. You know. Right. So. Yeah. I, so are you just, I guess, what's your intent with this conversation? Well, I want, I would like some answers as okay. to like why he left when I was a kid. Right. Um, and he moved to Illinois right. a little after my parents divorced. I fucking hardly, I think I saw him once until like high school graduation. Damn. Yeah. And 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 even then like i noticed that like when he was out here like he didn't really like have a relationship with my little brother right but he and i got along really well because he and i could go to bars and drink yeah yeah i gotcha and then your older brother didn't drink so like well and he lived in washington gotcha yeah, so yeah. yeah um you know it's so he could bond with you over like some type of substance but other than that it was like right and it was it was much more like homey vibes yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And so... Yeah. There would have been no substance without a substance. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> well put. Yeah. So, you know, I want to... I just want to get some answers, and I want to let him know, like, not in a malicious way, but, like, right. how it's affected me, and that right. in order for me to, like, accept, internalize, understand, and move on, right. I need to figure out what the circumstances are, like, yeah. why this happened... Yeah. Like, and I can, like, because I was on this, like, extended path of self-destruction, like, right. I can understand how it got to that sure. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would like to hear it from him. Right. Which makes sense. You know? It makes a lot of sense. And so, yeah. oh, I'm fucking dreading it. But at the same time, I know it's, because I've, I've told myself this for a long time, like, I need to, 
I really should talk to him yeah. about it, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And it's definitely, like, negatively affecting our current relationship right. because, like... You don't have the answers you want. Basically. Right, yeah. and, like, our conversations are Not entirely true. surface level, yeah. Yeah. you know? Like, that's... Most of the time, I just ignore him. Right, right. Um, but... Yeah, dude, I think, like, impending dread, like not looking forward to a situation is an important sign that like you need to do that thing you know for sure yeah. and this is yeah. like and i've done that right in other aspects of my life yeah and this yeah. is like i've i've talked about it on social media right and like right. all this right my only excuse i guess you could say is that this is for sure like a it needs to be a face-to-face -face conversation yes and my dad lives in illinois right and he's only out here like once a year. Right. And so now he's out here. Yeah. I don't know how long he's going to be here. Yeah. Um, as far as I know, he bought a one-way ticket. Yeah. yeah. He's usually out here for, I don't know, it varies, but like right. at least a month, right. you know? So, but I haven't seen him since last year. Yeah. And so, and in the last year was where my self-growth and like, spiritual journey really started to take off mm -hmm. and now i'm again presented with this opportunity where like i really need to take it seriously yeah. because yeah. he doesn't live here mm -hmm. i like hardly like i said like i see him once a year it's not something it's not a conversation i can have over the phone mm -hmm. you know that's just not that's not the, the type of conversation right. you have over right. the phone if you right. want to right. Like I need to like I need gauge to his reactions. Right, I need yeah. to see where he's at. I need to understand right. where he's coming from. And like, the only way you can do that is like body language, eye contact. Right, that nature, right. Like, and yeah. so obviously like I know it's gonna be an uncomfortable situation, mm -hmm. uncomfortable conversation for, for me and, and for him, but mm -hmm. it's one that I at least need to try and have. For sure, and I think that here's an important reason why. The three stages of human transformation as learned in my current program, Credit Jimmy Griffin, uh, are knowing, like saying you know something, mm -hmm. okay, like you consciously know something. The second level there is application, mm -hmm. okay, just mm -hmm. like applying it in your mm -hmm. lives, and then embodiment, right? Right. So you are currently, you have created and are running a program literally about relationships and being vulnerable, mm -hmm. okay? Arguably one of the most important relationships that you can have in your life that should be healthier with your parents mm -hmm. and one of the ways to have a very healthy relationship with your parents is to be vulnerable with them it's the only way about yeah about the areas that they you feel they miss or messed up on when you were a child mm -hmm. so like this is a huge part of your embodiment for sure for program and, as well and this is this con excuse me this conversation that you're going to have right is a huge part of the embodiment yeah, yeah. and you know i've had I've had some deep conversations with my mom right. to an extent, you know, there's like some things about my past that I don't particularly want to tell her face to face. Right. Sure. Um, but we've talked yeah, pretty extensively about, about some stuff, you know, and, and your mom is much more open minded. And, yeah, yeah. She's well, I think I mean, your just because, a lot. yeah. And because yeah. she was there, right. Right. Like, yeah, my dad left she point. was fucking there point. so yeah, like she saw yeah. how it affected me right. and we haven't had a whole lot of conversations about my dad right but we've talked about like her and i it took me a long time to repair that relationship with my mom yeah. you know yeah. um but this is the other side of it you know and so, so can i take a step back for sure yeah do you so you said it took a long time to repair the relationship between you and your mom <laughs> So growing up, when you were a kid, did you guys have a good relationship? With my dad? With your mom? With my mom, yeah. Okay, so what, the repair for your mom's, you and your mom's relationship was largely due to the stuff that you did. For sure. That led you astray. Yeah. That's the repair you're talking about. You guys didn't have a distant relationship growing up because she was there, she was present, she was the only parent yeah. in your life. Yeah. But you made bad choices and bad decisions in life that she fretted upon and looked down upon and you had to repair that gap. Yeah, okay, I mean like, yeah. there was a lot of like, I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, I mean, I've stolen her credit card. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know, right. just stuff of that nature yeah. and, and lying and right. all kinds of shit right. that breaks that trust, right. you know? Right. Like, 
but I've been kicked out of her house twice. Right. And when I came back, I had to beg her to let me back yeah. and like tell her that I would sub subject myself to like random drug tests and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then right when I moved back in, like right. a month later, I got a DUI for right. driving the influence of a controlled substance. So like, it's been a long fucking road yeah. of repairing yeah. that. Let's talk about that road. I'm interested in that road. Okay. <laughs> because I know what you're going through now and what you program you've created. And so, you know, I think that this could help your listeners understand some of the uh, experiential knowledge that you have on this topic, you know? Okay. That's a big deal. Um, you talk about a lot of relationships and boundaries on your Instagram, but I think the people that listen to the podcast and the people that are thinking about going through your programs could benefit from you explaining the things that you've gone through. So let's talk about that road to repair. Um, what are some of the things that you did actively to help repair the relationship with your mom? So it was, you know, it was, there were, I wouldn't say it was like a straight decline and then yeah. a straight incline of sure. repair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's more like a heartbeat, ups and downs. For sure. Yeah. And, you know, in, in 2015, um, I was 23, almost 24, went to rehab for the first time. Yeah. And voluntarily, I asked, I told my mom, like, I should get some help. Right. You know? And... You know, she agreed, she took me up there, and I abstained from substances, right. and I was in the program for 45 days, and, but I was still, this is, this is the interesting part, because my experience growing up was, right. like, being in the middle of a very passive aggressive family dynamic mm -hmm. where if somebody's upset they go in the room they slam the door they don't talk about it you know so that's what I grew up with and so like then I, of course I mimicked those behaviors yeah. and so I still like never really talked about the shit that was bothering me okay. like I did I did the work to get clean and sober and, and kind of figure out a new side of life, I guess you could right. say, but I never really went deep into it to right. figure it out, right. you know? And so there were some tools that I learned in that first trip to rehab that are now implemented in my program because I didn't understand them at the time. Right. But as the years went on, I was like, oh, yeah. this is, you know? I see this is what's going on. Okay. But back to the, my experience, you know, I would, I would tell my mom enough of what was going on to mm -hmm. where like either she would be slightly concerned or she would be put at ease. Mm -hmm. but, but she never knew the full extent of what was going on. Mm -hmm. I was very good at hiding those things. Yeah. And, you know, it was also, I felt growing up that I was the outcast of the family. I didn't follow in the footsteps of my mom. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, religion and college and, and all that. And so I didn't feel as though her and I had a lot in common. Right. And it turns out we do, which yeah. is awesome. But like, we didn't have again like at that point when I was younger like my mom and I like our relationship was very surface level right. and I would you know kind of tell her what she wanted to hear like basic details about my life whether I was living at home or not living at home right. and it's you know when she when she really and I don't, I don't know for sure. I think she suspected there was a lot more going on than I was telling her. Like, I'm sure, like, mm -hmm. moms know everything. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? They've got that, like, seven but, sense, yeah. You know, it, or six sense. it took a while after I went to rehab the second time. Yeah. In 2017, even then, you know, I, I was working, and then I was working two jobs, and, like, 
on the on the grind, you know, but right. that again limited my ability to like spend time with my mom. Right. You know? And so but I was living at her house. Right. And so we started to rebuild the trust of me not doing anything shady yeah. and yeah. I think she realized that I was like taking it seriously. Yeah. Um and so, you know, it took I don't know, two years, right? Probably of like consistent effort to be respectful mm -hmm. and trustworthy and communicate and you know Yeah, I'm sure part of that was that you know, you had set, you were and had set boundaries for yourself at the time. Mm -hmm. And this was probably your first time in your life throughout these things going on that you were actually adhering to these boundaries. In regards to substances, in regards for to sure. Substances. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. even even beyond yeah. that, like, yeah. I had, I had all of the friends, mm -hmm. all of them. Yeah. And so like... There wasn't one friend you didn't have. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but how many of those were actually friends, you know? Dude, like fucking four yeah. out of like yeah, 400, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, and so... I know, you were always the guy that was like, yeah, I know a guy, I know a guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know and like, guy. I would like hop from My boy friend group you to friend yeah, group yeah, yeah. and like, yeah. I wanted everybody to like mm -hmm. me. And so mm -hmm. I would Isn't that funny? portray an image yeah. of like, funny, I could get along, it is, man. And, and so, you know, part of me like getting sober and like holding firm to like, I'm not going to do drugs or right. drink alcohol or whatever. Right. I also had to, by default, yeah. eliminate a fuck ton of people from right. my life. Right. And I got some backlash for that from certain people. You know, they were upset and, Naturally. you know, I got a lot of, oh, like, Nick thinks he's better than everybody yeah. now, blah, yeah. blah, 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 yeah. all, you know. Yeah. And I had to hold firm to those yeah. because I knew that if I didn't, right. I would just slip back into the same right. patterns. Right. 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 And this is a really important distinction I want to touch on, but keep going. Um, you know, it's it's not just like a game of like set boundaries one time, your life is forever yeah, changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's such a continuous and evolving thing. And the more you do it, the more you learn. And the right. more you do it, the more you get comfortable with it. Right. And you understand different areas, you start to uncover the blind yeah. spots. Yeah. When you set boundaries, you're like, Phew, shit, I didn't even see that stuff right. over there. Right. And then you can, you know, continue to build these layers yeah. of your own personal protection. Yeah. yeah. And I never did that my That's entire right. life. That's important. There's a, you know, yeah. vulnerability, nope, That's powerful. never. I, my, I got bullied heavy in middle school yeah. and my mom didn't even know yeah. that I got yeah. bullied to the extent that I did until she heard this podcast. Wow. Um, on one of the episodes, the first episode that I recorded. It's and funny you say that. She, I'll finish and then, and then you can go. Yeah, it's um, fine. Yeah, yeah. I, just... um, I, she knew that I had gotten bullied right. a little bit right. um, because one of the other kid's parents told her. The right. other kid that I was getting bullied with, yeah, like yeah. he told his mom. Yeah. And our parents were friends. Yeah. And so like that mom told my mom. Yeah. And this was like after we were already. Yeah finished with that school I was in high school right. and, um, oh, but fucking kids. <laughs> dude I <laughs> I had no I had no self esteem I had no self confidence no, you, you know yeah. and and so like vulnerability was like fuck no I'm not gonna for one like I don't believe that I'm capable of standing up for myself right. and two I'm not gonna let anybody see that it's bothering me yeah for sure and so I hid 100%. that and I internalized yeah. it and yeah. like that just fucking sat with yeah. me for a long yeah. time and it's like a virus it grows in for sure yeah, and that's what yeah. that's like what ultimately led like a, that was a big part of like what led to like people pleasing yeah because yeah. i was like fuck like these are kids that i was best fucking friends with right and out of nowhere i did nothing intentional yeah. to make them like the like my best friends at this time right. like, turned on me right. and just because I was friends with the new kid, yeah. and I got bullied like hard yeah. to the point where I was like crying in the back of the classroom, yeah. and yeah. I never told anybody right. until anybody. Right. And so, anyways, um, you had something you wanted to say? Oh no, there was two things I was gonna say. First thing I'll say is that I can relate to that because like, I never told anyone either when I was bullied. I got bullied a lot 
like in elementary school and in middle school because mm. um, I was like the chubby kid with glasses and spiked mm. hair had frosted tips mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty badass I've seen pictures yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you've seen it so I was bullied heavy too and like I never told anyone until the first relationship I was in that I felt like safe you know mm -hmm. and seen and heard and I was with Lily the, mo the mother of my child and I told her like everything you know, I fucking, because I was 22 at the time, and, like, I had never had someone in my life that I felt that safe around, mm -hmm. and that understood people, like, she was older, she was 30, so, like, mm -hmm. she had seen some shit, she'd been there, you know, mm -hmm. and so she really understood, and that's, I just, like, fucking, man, I poured everything into her, and into that relationship, and, um, and she told my mom one day, a few years later, like, we had had Lila at this point, and she was, like, Mom was like, well, you know, Cody, he's had it pretty easy, and, like, it, and, you know, he's, like, he's worked hard, but, like, kind of just hinting at the fact that, like, my brothers had had it a little bit worse, and, mm -hmm. and that's why, you know, I was in the position I was in, and so on and so forth, and Lily was like, no, like, no, she's like, he, Cody was picked on a fucking lot, like, here are the stories from that he was picked on, my mom had no idea, she was, like, flabbergasted, mm -hmm. not only that, like, most of the bullying was done by my older brother, you know? So, like, <laughs> while she thought that he was, like, had this different life, and I had a different life where I was kind of protected and shelled, it was like, no, like, my older brother would bully me in front of his friends. Mm. And, like, they would all laugh at me while, while I was, like, crying. I remember one day, I was in the, we were playing handball. And do you remember handball? Like, we, butts up, have you ever played butts mm -hmm. up? Where, like, you go against the wall and someone throws a handball at you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, like, we were playing that one morning, and it was like 6 o'clock in the morning. It's cold as fuck outside. It's me, my brother, and a few of his friends. And they're older, so I want to be the cool kid. You know, mm -hmm. like, I'm like in 6th grade, he's in 8th grade. And I was like, oh, I want to play with these kids and show them what's up, you know? Anyways, like, it was my turn to go butts up on the wall. <laughs> and I, I go and stand up against the wall, and my brother runs up behind me and gets within, like, a foot of me and just pegs me in the back with this ball, dude. And you're supposed to throw it from a safe, di like, a far distance. Yeah. You know? Where it has time to slow down. Behind the line. But he was just being a fucking dick. And he came up and threw it at my back like a foot away. And it was cold as shit. It stung so bad. I still remember how bad that felt. And I like fell to the ground and was crying because of how bad it hurt. And I just remember looking back and all of them like pointing and laughing at me and calling me like a pussy and a bitch and all Damn. this stuff. Yeah. And like that was a very traumatic experience for me in, in high school or in middle school. Because uh, like that was that kind of set the basis for my self-confidence my first year in middle school, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was already bullied in elementary school by kids, you know, as well. But that kind of put the icing on the cake. And then it was like, I had to go a whole year with all these eighth graders that knew how much of a bitch I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and fucking, it was like a continuum from there. And then my brother graduated and I moved into seventh grade. And I started to get some friends from there and got a little better. But, so yeah, I, I hear you on like not opening up and telling people. I never told anyone that shit because I was so embarrassed of it, you know? Yeah. And I think that's kind of when I developed like the outer shell personality of like, I'll fuck you up. You know, mm. that's when it was like, okay, I need to, I need to defend myself now, you know, mm. and how do I do that? I do that by like, <laughs> this is going to sound weird, but I do that by like acting crazy, you know, mm. being like, oh, you think you're crazy. Like you've seen nothing, you know, I'm <laughs> fucking crazy, you know, and that started in like seventh grade and mm. uh, that kind of molded. And then in ninth grade, I was in my first fight, you know, and, and when I won the fight, I was like, oh, okay. Like, I really, I've got something here, you know? Like, I'm on to something. <laughs> People aren't going to fuck with me anymore, you know? And so, uh, yeah, that, that kind of carried it from there. But, um, and the other thing that I wanted to, to touch on was, uh, fuck, what you said about... It was something about my mom, right? Yeah, I think it was... Um, fuck, I can't remember now. I lost it. Anyway, I'll let you go. You were going to say something. I'm trying to remember where I was at before the bullying to like bring back your train of thought but we were talking about how you repaired the relationship with your mom yeah like what measurable steps you might have taken to enhance that relationship or better that relationship yeah what, what I did think that it look was... like for you did you do it unconsciously or was it a conscious thing were you really trying to make the relationship better I was trying to make myself better ah okay. and in doing that yeah Improved the relationship. relationship. Because she saw the effort that you were putting in. Right. She and respected it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. this is like, you know, the, like, arguably, like, the most important component of the program that I developed is, like, improve the relationship you have with yourself. Yes. 
And in doing that, yeah. you'll improve every other relationship yes. you have. Yes. You know, you exactly. have to put yourself first. Exactly. And this is, I think that's a trait that I picked up from recovery. And I know they teach it a lot in like AA and NA, but I didn't do any 12 step program. Yeah. You know, but I, bits and pieces I, I, I kept and I, and I used and, yeah. you know, as important as, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of people have families that are alcoholics or drug addicts and right. they will tell you the successful ones yeah. that the most important thing in their life is their sobriety because without that, they won't have anything else. Right. So as much as they want to put their kids first, they have to put their sobriety first. Otherwise, they don't have their kids. Yeah. Yeah. And so the same concept applies. Mm. If you, you know, let's say you're in um, an amazing relationship. You have your significant other is fucking awesome. Right. But you don't have a good relationship with yourself. Right. It's just going to be, you're going to find yourself in a lot of toxic patterns. Yeah. yeah. And if you can make that switch and put yourself first and start working on yourself, mm -hmm. it will in turn benefit your relationship for sure. Yeah. But if you don't do that, yeah. the chances of you ending up in a healthy relationship long term slim to none. Slim to none. Yeah. And that's just on the on the romantic relationship yeah, side. Right. Friendships, coworkers, it your goes for boss, every, every, every single relationship, every relationship you have. Yeah. It has to start with you. Yeah. yeah. And it's you know, there was, there was a lot of things that I did that I didn't realize worked or, yeah. or that could be replicated for mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just like, oh, this is, this is just how I'm doing it. Yeah. And like, it's turning out all right. Yeah. But there's yeah. a lot of things that I did that I picked up along the way from different people and places and programs. And they've, they've culminated in a way of life for me in the relationship mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. that has greatly benefited me. Mm -hmm. And it's the things you've done for yourself. The about. things I've done for myself yeah. have massively benefited yeah. me. And I'm a big proponent of that as well. Yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, it takes, like you said earlier, like, was I consciously doing it or was I, unconsciously doing it like right. trying to recover the relationship with my mom part of it was even like unconsciously doing it myself right. to sure. to improve myself it you was were, just like yeah you were consciously taking better measures to improve yourself but you didn't know the impact it was having unconsciously as well yeah and i didn't i wasn't like actively trying to improve my own personal well-being right i was just desperately trying to not do drugs yeah. yeah and i was working and and f you know for parts of it i felt like i was just on autopilot yeah you know yeah um but you know six months after seven months after i got sober i was arrested mm -hmm. and I had been dating this girl for a very short period of time. And yeah. when I got out of jail, she told me that she loved me yeah. and I said it back because I was, I was very infatuated right. at the time, but I was also freaked out because yeah. I didn't know if I was going to be going to jail for like yeah. two years, yeah. you know? Yeah. And thankfully I didn't, yeah. but you know, uh, a couple weeks after the, I love you's were exchanged, I realized that like, I can't, yeah. Can't say that. It's not fair to, he didn't her or me, I didn't mean it. Yeah. You know, I, in the moment it felt right, right. but I, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't real yeah. for me, yeah. you know? That's important. And, and so I, I broke up with her yeah. and, and I took the following year, which was 2018, yeah. I took it like basically to myself right. and for a portion of that time, I was I was like actively riding solo, but I was also waiting for somebody else to 
move back to San Diego because I wanted to like rekindle a relationship. Right. Right. And that didn't work. Yeah. It did not turn out how I thought it was going to. Yeah. And so but thankfully during that time while I was waiting, I wasn't in a constant state of like what can I be doing mm -hmm. to get this person back? Mm -hmm. Because of the circumstances the other person was in, that just was not possible at the time. And so I was just focused on me and how can I, there was a little bit of like, how can I prove that I'm what I say I am yeah. to other people? Yeah. But it was also, Imposter syndrome. a little bit, yeah. but it was also there had like in my head, like this thought of like, there has to be more. Yeah to life than just this current state that I'm in right. and there are still times where I catch myself doing things that I like negative patterns that right. I'm like aware of but yeah. the difference is now I catch myself which right. is great right. but nobody's perfect it's right. It's an evolving thing. Right. And the cool part about this this program that I created is like, it's based off of my personal experience, yeah. which is like my entire life. Right. Because from like the family that I was born into, my family is awesome. Yeah. They just, I was not taught how to effectively communicate my emotions. Right. Right. And so, I think that goes for a lot of people in America, you know. Yeah, especially yeah. men. Mm -hmm. Especially men. Right, and we so are not taught that. I and I wasn't raised in like a overly masculine environment. For like, sure. I remember growing up, my dad would always say, "Like, you don't want to see how fast I can run away from a fight." And so I wasn't taught to like stand up for yourself, yeah, yeah. And stand yeah. your ground, and yeah. fight if you have to. Right. I was not taught that. Right. I was taught like avoid confrontation. Yeah. And so, which is just as, just as toxic as like, fight everybody. You gotta find the middle ground, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And so, so coupling, yeah, avoid conflict with, be passive aggressive. Yeah, awful fucking mixture. Oh, terrible mixture. Awful yeah. mixture. Terrible mixture. And that was yeah, that was my talk about avoidance strategy for sure. Like, yeah, like that was my. And then yeah. add on top of that, yeah. like people please yeah. heavy as fuck yeah, yeah. which yeah. again adds on to avoid conflict right. because you want everybody to like you you right. don't want any you don't want to you don't want any kind of yeah, yeah. you don't want to rock the boat yeah, with yeah. anybody yeah, yeah. and so yeah. everybody has to like you yeah. but it doesn't work because then people find out that you're either being fake or like two-faced and you're not being genuine or authentic right. and right. it it just can't work yeah. but all of these different things like added up right. and over time I was like fuck yeah. like what like how do I get out of this yeah. you know and I, I never had that thought like it never like came to me of like me one day thinking like damn I got some seriously fucked up habits yeah. like how do I fix these yeah. it was just a gradual change over time and I didn't like consciously apply things to resolve the issues that I had. Right. You just became more aware. I became more aware yeah. and I started to like figure things out yeah. little by little. And I was right. like, oh this works cool. I'm gonna do that. And right. like that doesn't work. Let's not do that again. Yeah. And yeah. started to like navigate these yeah. waters better. Yeah. Like I, I was able to adjust my sails. Yeah. There you go. To go with the wind. Yeah yeah. You know? Yeah. And you stopped resisting, you stopped fighting. It was like okay. Yeah. Now it's time to forward move forward yeah. but also be aware while right. moving forward yeah for sure yeah, yeah. you know yeah. and so arguably the only way to move forward is to be aware of what's holding you back you know that's true yeah good point so um, I mean, but yeah so the cool thing about this program is that it is my experience that I've used and developed into something that I, that can be replicated for other people right and so far I'm getting excellent feedback right and that's good it's good. It's great. You know, it makes me feel it's so fulfilling. Yeah. You know? I'm it's not like it's not like I'm out here making a ton of money. Right. 
but, but that making, doesn't even you're making happy money and it doesn't <laughs> right, but like it's not the money's not even on my mind right like right it's on my mind to the extent of like i have a car payment and insurance mm-hmm. but like i'm still right now i'm on unemployment so yeah. like, it doesn't even matter right, right. and but it's fulfilling because I'm able to, like I can see the change yeah. that I'm having on other people yeah. in a positive way. Yeah. And I'm like, right. holy shit, yeah. you're telling me I can do this yeah. Yeah. and like make it a legit career, yeah. if you want to call it that, you know? Yeah. It's a career, for sure. And, but the other benefit is that while I'm doing it, yeah. I'm also learning more about myself. Yeah and how best to relay these strategies to other people Ah. so while i'm helping other people i'm also learning which means i get better which means my program gets better which means the people that i help get better yeah and so it's just this constant (laughs) climb dude that's crazy i I would say my biggest hindrance right now in my program i have to take away from yours but is like i feel like i need to come out with the perfect program nah bro and that's been my hindrance it's like i'm like nobody's gonna want to work with me if i can't actually like there's no value in their lives so like that's my biggest hurdle right now is that like i'm sitting down and i'm going deep as fuck into like psychology and like i've got my my computer has like 30 tabs open with like robert keegan's developmental theory leadership theory self audience theory do you yeah, yeah it's send good. it to everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm good. Like, it's good. You, dude, it's yeah. so good. Yeah. I literally have yeah. it like as a PDF, and I'm right. just like, new client. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you should read this. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's it's awesome. Great, it's a great, you know? dude, it's a great, great, great thing. Yeah, man. Um, and he also talks a lot about self authorship and stuff. And then what I found out recently, because that's what I want to do. Jordan Peterson has a self authoring program. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is crazy. I had no idea. I was you watching. didn't know that. No, I looked up on. Bro, YouTube. I thought that was like no. Loki. I thought that's what no. sparked your idea. No, dude, no. I was on YouTube and I typed in self authorship just to like get some ideas, mm-hmm. you know, just to like get some thoughts going and things. And it was with Jordan Peterson on Joe Rogan's podcast, a little thirteen minute clip. Press play. He starts talking about his self authoring program. So I'm like, oh fuck. So I almost I go, did that last year. I di- I signed up for it right away. It's only thirty bucks. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, fuck it, dude. I'm gonna do this, and that'll help me add value to this, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but so far I'm making some good progress, you know, I've got it outlined and the way that I'm going to, uh, the way that I'm going to do it is, is it's as if you're writing a book, you know? Mm -hmm. So like self-awareness is the first start. That's the starting intro to the program. Like you have to be aware for any change to take place. Mm -hmm. So self-awareness is the first start and the, the title of the chapter, the caption there, I guess, is like opening your book. You know, mm. like, so you're starting to open your book. Okay. The next step is, uh, self-leadership. So now that you're aware, like of what's going on in your life, what are the areas that you can lead and guide yourself and discipline yourself that will result in good things? Mm. What are the areas of your life that you need to be more disciplined to get good results? And what are the habits that you need to change? So this whole area is all about getting yourself in line, mm-hmm. showing up as the best version of you, disciplining yourself, uh, to a point where it's like you can remove your bad habits for the most part, you can adhere to a set of good habits daily, and you can in, uh, reflect internally and know yourself. You know, mm-hmm. you can look in the metaphorical mirror without looking away. You know, and the next step is is self authorship, and this is where it begins. And I call this chapter like picking up your pen. I'm like, this is mm-hmm. what you're about to write. You know, mm-hmm. and then this goes through like, what do you want for your life? Creating mm-hmm. your life by design. You know, and then this last part ties into something I want to talk about on your end too. Uh, but then it goes into like constantly revising and editing and mm-hmm. that's the last part of it where it's like you're going to go back through your book you're going to read things chapters areas maybe parts that you don't like and you're going to figure out how you can change those things not change them when they happened but that's f- past authoring you know you're going to author about what happened in the past and you're going to go back and say okay how can i avoid that situation in the future mm-hmm. It didn't benefit me so you're going to constantly revise and edit your book as you go to help you make better decisions based on the circumstances and the situations that you encounter dude i want to do it <laughs> when you finish i'll do it all right all right and uh, so then a big part of the, the continuity portion as well and something you touched on earlier is like when you set boundaries 
when you said that the boundaries of eliminating certain people from your life, that's something that's very challenging for people to do. Mm-hmm. People have a really hard time thinking they can't cut people out of their lives mm-hmm. or can't cut situations or jobs or whatever out of their lives, you know? And so a big portion of my belief system that I'm going to uh, intertwine into this program is making sacrifices. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be the revising and editing version of your book. So you're going you're gonna to have to make sacrifices. And you're going to have to identify where in your life those sacrifices need to be made. And I don't care what it is, whether it's with your family, whether it's with your closest friends, whether it's with your relationship, like you need to understand, not you, but Mm -hmm. uh, generalized, you need to understand how important it is to make those tough decisions in life. Mm -hmm. How important it is to sit down and look at yourself in the face and be brutally honest and be like, hey, this is where my life is not going right. And how do I change it? Through cutting this, this, and this out, you mm-hmm. know? And making those sacrifices. Because, like I've said before, if you don't make sacrifices in your life, your life becomes a sacrifice. Yeah. You know? And so I, that's kind of the route that I want to take this program. And um, already, you know, I've, I've dove into a significant, significant portion of this. And, like, that's the problem I'm having now, is I want a perfect program before it even yeah. comes out. And hearing you say this right now is just like mind blowing for me because I am racking my fucking brain around like, I can't put out a video unless it's like perfect. Mm. I can't have clients work on a worksheet unless it's perfect. I can't even, I can't start week one until I have week 16 finished, you know? I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna let you and, the, and whoever listens in on this episode onto a little secret. I didn't even have my program finished when I launched it. <laughs> that gives me anxiety hearing that gives me fucking anxiety it wasn't even done yeah i had a general outline yeah but i had i had the details and steps and like the program figured out like 60 percent, and then i just fucking boom it's out who wants it you know Damn, dude. and it's been a fucking ride I'm you sure. know it's taking a little bit to like get in the rhythm and and yeah to like remember certain things and you know it's it's entirely new to me yeah, you know yeah. so there's definitely gonna be some trial and error and and some definitely some mistakes made yeah. along the way yeah. but the cool part is that it's like a it's like a living thing yeah like you can change yeah, yeah. and alter yeah. Yeah. at a moment's notice yeah. like because it's yours yeah. you can literally go in like let's say yeah. you have somebody and they're like oh like I don't understand this or like right. what do you mean boom, boom, boom like go fucking in and yeah. fix it right yeah. then and there yeah. and then the next person ready yeah. to go that's what Jeremy said he was like you need to listen closely to the questions from your clients because like they will literally give you the answers to your program mm-hmm. they'll be like what does this mean or I feel like it's missing in this area like mm-hmm. like what's going on here right. how do I figure this out and then he's like you take that question and you turn it into a video you turn it into a journal prompt you turn it into something you know mm-hmm. and yeah man that's I guess that's a mental block that I need to get around is like, I want to answer all your questions before you even ask them. <laughs> it's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. Know. You know, and I know, but like that just comes with my personality type. It's like, yeah. I, I'm just like, I don't know, dude. I, don't know. I started on like the AE worksheet of like figuring out your ideal client. You know, mm-hmm. I started that mm-hmm. and I stopped doing that because I was like, I know my, my, I know it in my head. I know who I want to help. Okay. So now let me create this program. All right. And then I start creating the program and I go back to the worksheet. I'm like, oh, fuck. I didn't consider that. You yeah, know? bro. So I'm like, I got to finish this worksheet before I do anything else, you know? Dude, it's hard. Yeah. So anyway. That took me a long time. I thought I did the whole thing wrong. I was like, I don't fucking know what I'm doing. Yeah. And I said yeah. to Jeremy, and he yeah. was like, dude. Yeah. I don't know. Like, he was like, you think you did this wrong, but it's like so much more in depth yeah. than like what I've seen from other people. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit. Which is okay. good, you know? Cool. Yeah. Like that's makes me feel good. Because right. I'm like, oh, like I'm because there's part of me, especially at that point in time, I was like, you know, I'd signed up for this program and like trying to create something for myself. Right. But I had no fucking self confidence. Yeah. I was like, I have yeah. no idea what I'm doing. Right. Like I wasn't even like fully convinced when I signed up for the program and I went into it not having a single fucking clue what I wanted to do and like somehow 
Jeremy's fucking wizard ass like, <laughs> got me to like see things that oh, I didn't realize. Man, and I was like, yeah. oh shit, this yeah. is where I can be of value. the most value. And it's awesome, yeah. you know? And, but kind of to like tie all this together is, well, I guess first to answer your question or your comment, like it does not have to be fucking perfect. Yeah. It'll never be perfect. Right. Ever. Right. You just have to keep working at it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think everyone has unique gifts. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily that you're born with the gift of like, X, Y, or Z, that's the answer to all your life's problems and you can turn that into something right. that's gonna make you successful, whatever your definition of success is. Yeah. But another large, massively important piece of it is your life experience. Mm -hmm. What you've been through, like the cliche phrase of like, grow through what you go through. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I haven't heard that. You've never heard that? No. Oh shit. Okay. So but it makes sense. Whatever whatever you go through in life, yeah. You hopefully grow. You either like fold yeah. or you grow. Right. And I think in in my experience and in my like perception of the world, the people who go through the most shit end up when they come out the other side. Yeah with the most depth yeah. to them and, and they're able to offer so much value to other people because of their life experience. Mm -hmm. And they can, you know, they can use what they've been through and what they've learned to save people yeah. the trouble of having to do the same shit that they did. Exactly. exactly. And, you know, when I was doing that, that worksheet um, that you were talking about, uh, it turns out that, like, my ideal client is, like, <laughs> me six years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And that's the thing, yeah. Like, yeah. where I was yeah. at. And, yeah, like, yeah. who... Right. For one, like... Who best for me to help than like somebody right. that's Who's going like I've through. fucking been there yeah. and I can and this isn't to say that like every single person is at a specific point and those right. are the only people that I'm gonna try and work with. Right. So you have to meet people where they're at. Yeah. But it's been it's been a fucking journey, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean. It's the comeback journey. It is the comeback yeah, journey. It's the comeback yeah. journey. And, and so you said something a moment ago. I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind tonight. Um, okay, yeah, you said like you, you identified your ideal client and it was who you were six years ago. Okay, so the funny thing about that is mm. like <laughs> my ideal client is who I am now. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Because, like, I want to teach people how to author their own life. And the way I'm trying to do that is through authoring my own life. Mm. And the, the way I'm authoring my own life is by creating a self-authorship program. Interesting. So that's kind of, it's unique in that scenario where it's like, nice. I'm also going through it with the client. Because this is me literally authoring my life. This is what I want to do with my life. Mm -hmm. So the, right now I'm in the first stage. I'm actually I'm in the writing the book phase. You know, mm -hmm. I mean I've been writing a book for years, but metaphorically speaking, like this is the start to my new book. You know, mm -hmm. and so I'm just picking up a pen. I'm in the second phase of the program. I've I've gone through the self awareness portion. I've I've self assessed to a very minute, grotesque uh, level that most people don't want to go to, <laughs> and it's been fucking hideous, but also beautiful at the same time. You know. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like uh, Fiona in Shrek, you know, how she's a mm. how she's a ogre at nighttime and a princess during the day. <laughs> That's how it feels. Like sometimes it's hideous as fuck, and sometimes it's wonderful, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've gone I've gone through that, and now I'm at a point where it's like, okay, 
this is what I want to do with my life. I want to help people tell their own story, make their own, write their own story, I should say. Mm. Create their own life by design. And the way that I'm doing that is through creating a program that teaches you how to create life by design. Mm. And this program is me creating my life by design. And so how can you make the program perfect if you haven't even That's what I'm saying. figured it out? Yeah, I can't. And I'm, right. But this is this is the thing. It's like, there's a lot of things that we talk about. It's always <laughs> the thing. It's always the thing, but we should probably say these are the things, you know? <laughs> Let's make this This is story. the thing, bro. Yeah, this is the thing, <laughs> but these are the things. This one right here is the thing. But the culmination but of our so podcast many. are these things. Uh, anyway, so this, this is the thing. is like, I, I'll have like a good idea, right? And I'll be like, okay, this is great. What's the psychology behind this? Boom. I straight dive into like Keegan, development theory, a bunch of other people. Mm-hmm. Um, all their theories behind this psychologically. And I'm like, fuck, there's so much information here. Like, okay, now I have to understand and learn all of this information for me to be useful in this category. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, because there's so much to know. And if I don't understand all of that, like in, in, in grave detail, then I'm doing my clients a disservice. Because I'm giving them my opinion on something that's been researched in studies for, for hundreds of years by people far more intelligent than myself. I don't think there's ever a way to know it all. There's not. You there's can not, know, but there's like foundational principles for some of these things. For sure, like, you should know enough. enough. Yeah, but, but then it's like then I have the thing I beat myself over the head with, where it's like, well, dude, you're not a psychology teacher. You know, you're not a therapist. Like you, you, are, this is not a search for a PhD here. Like, you're just trying to help people. You know? Yeah. Well, I got like, I don't know if it's entirely similar, but like, you know, I got. I got asked like one of my current clients like on our initial call before they were accepted into the program right they're like so like what's your background and ex- like w- what makes you credible yeah to do this yeah. and I was like that's a good question damn what was your fair. response I basically just gave like a brief rundown version of like yeah. my life my experiences what yeah. I and like what I've learned and right how I feel it's applicable for others who are struggling with similar things. Yeah. And yeah. that's all it is. Like, I'm not a, I don't have any, any sort of formal training. Right. I don't have, you know, I've taken one psychology class yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that was, you know, 10 experience. years ago. Yeah. You've learned but, to set boundaries and be vulnerable. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's five like foundational pillars in my program and, each of those, um, they're, they, they all play an important role. They are, they are, all five of them are a leg on the stool of right. the end result. Right, right. And I, I had considered, you know, trying to, put more put more like conscious thought into the the details behind like the effects of why I'm teaching what I'm teaching and what right. specifically they'll do for you and right but that's not the way that I learn right I learn by doing right. and by experiencing. Yeah. And so, and that's another, like I said earlier, like while I'm talking with clients right. and, and explaining things and, and I'm having like all these like little mini epiphanies, like yeah. mid conversation, I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. that, like the way I just explained it, yeah. that's so much better than the way I've been explaining it. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. this is, it's an awesome learning tool. Right of like practically applying the things that you want to teach right, right. and then refining yeah. and then going back and then, yeah. you know, and so do your clients have like lifetime access to this program so that when you make changes to it, they can go back and like see the changes. So it's unlike a program like the one you're in. Yeah. Okay. Um, they have, 
like access to me yeah. all the time yeah. and whatever resources I give them they have right. forever right um, but to be honest like yeah. I don't know I haven't even had one person finish the program yet. yeah I got you okay. so yeah. you know I have current, where does look what is the hosting platform is it an online platform that you post things through or is it how does it work uh, so it's uh, weekly Zoom calls okay. to connect yeah. with the clients, yeah. and then I send them through Google Drive each week what they need. Gotcha. Okay, that's legit. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like yeah. that setup. That's a good setup. Yeah. So, so how many clients do you have now? I have five, and okay. I have a sixth one starting this upcoming Monday. Nice. That's great. Dude. Yeah. Is that too much of a workload for you right now? No, dude. I thought I was going to be overwhelmed with yeah. five. Yeah. And um, So you're doing five calls a week? Yes. Uh, all on the same day? Six. No, mm -hmm. okay. no it's great. spread out. Like yeah. I'm, I have time slots available all seven days of the week. Okay. Um, they they seem to be you know, I would say let's see. Generally speaking, they all fall on I would say three days out of the week. Mm. Which is okay. That's good. Yeah. 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 So it's, you know, it's awesome. And, and then by doing this, you know, I was, I was like super overwhelmed. Like right. I was like, Oh my God, five is going to be so much, yeah. you know, but now that I'm like getting in the rhythm, I'm like, give me five more, bro. Yeah. No way. Yeah. That's yeah. That's for cool. sure. That's cool. You know? And, yeah. Yeah. and it's, so that's also a part of the growth of the program too, is you are also realizing like what workload you can take on and like, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's cool how much of a learning process this is. Yeah, and the, you know the only the only um, the only other thing that I'm focusing on right now besides that program is right. this podcast. Right. right. And so it's not you know it's not that much, and well that's not true. I have my program, I have the podcast, I'm right. still in a mentorship program myself, right. and I'm doing a fitness and nutrition program. Gotcha. And even with all that, Damn. I'm, I'm chilling. So you're like business, mind, body, right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How are you taking care of your soul? Full force. <laughs> <laughs> um, missing an aspect. It plays in, no, it plays yeah, in, yeah, you know, I have sure. Well, plus you meditate, you journal. I meditate, yeah. I journal. Yeah. Um, the float is back open, so oh nice. I did a, yeah, yeah. Did a float last week. I got yeah. another one tomorrow morning. Nice. Um, and I've ha and I have them all like racked up because right. they roll over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know how you can tell who's gonna do well in quarantine and who's not? Who? People who can go in sensory deprivation tanks. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is that is a brief synopsis of time. Yeah. Or I guess like a brief period of time of like what quarantine is like, you know. Yeah, you're dude. in a dark room for an hour with no senses. Right. Like your just... mind is the only tool you have in that place. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like for you? What does it look for a lot of people? Mm -hmm. It looks like insanity for most people. Yeah. Which is why people are going fucking insane in quarantine, you know? Yeah, man. But it's dude, it's so fucking nice. It's so and nice, like... man. If I didn't get if I didn't get uh, motion sickness, I would mm -hmm. totally do it again. Yeah. But I I got sick as fuck last night. Yeah, time. yeah, I remember, yeah. yeah. But you know that's the soul aspect is like I just I just went back to that last week right. um, on Thursday. It was the first time I'd done it in months right. since we went. That was right. the last time I did it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, you know, I journal and I meditate and I go on I go on walks. Yeah. Regularly yeah. through my neighborhood. So you're out in nature constantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, not let's say like nature. I'm like walking around my neighborhood. But there's a park. Yeah. I walk through yeah. the grass. Yeah. You know. That's good. Um, and you know I've. I take um, some holistic supplements to, I know that's more of like body and mind, but it definitely puts me at ease. Sure. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, as best I can, mm -hmm. incorporate a well-rounded, mm -hmm. holistic, healthy life. Yeah. Yeah. And. Which, dude, I mean, that if there's something to strive for, is that. Fuck how much yeah. money you make, fuck what you drive, yeah, how much car you have like, in your house, all that. It's, and you know, I struggle with, like me personally, I'm, I'm skew very heavy towards like the feminine energy side. Right. So for me to 
like set goals and achieve them on time yeah. and stick to a rigid Absolutely. routine. Yeah. It's really hard for me to do that. Right. That being said, it's interesting because I'm like very passionate about this, like the podcast and my new program that I've created and right. I genuinely believe that it will help people yeah, yeah. significantly yeah. help people yeah. and, that and so is everything, man. right and so while I may like procrastinate a little bit here and there mm-hmm. and I might slack off on whatever like I get shit done because I believe in what I'm doing right. and right. I feel like that makes all the difference you know for sure um, we talked a little bit earlier about someone that you and I both mutually know who is I won't name that person, but who is like complacent in their life, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I had a conversation with this person recently and they mentioned how much anxiety they have. Mm -hmm. And so kind of to tie into what you're saying, like this is someone who doesn't set goals, someone who's just coasting through life, someone who is very satisfied, quote unquote, with the day-to-day standard of living, Mm -hmm. someone who is just kind of going with the flow and suffers from tremendous anxiety. Mm-hmm. And so the conversation I had with this person, they were like, I was like, dude, your anxieties are like, they're trying to tell you something, you know? They're trying to tell you like, the path you're going down is not the right path. Like, the, like your body is literally responding to danger. Like mm-hmm. that's, that's what anxiety is. It's like your body's trying to warn you that like you're in danger somehow, you know? Right. Like what you're doing is not right or what's happening around you is not right. You need to stop that. You need to do something different, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, that's your body's response system. To what's going on externally and internally you know mm-hmm. and when I said that that person was just like oh I just buried it deep and I was like damn and that that hit me because it was like how many people coast through life like that and just have these emotions and these feelings that they like oh my god I need to go see a doctor and get some prescription medication because I have anxiety and it's like yeah, do you really have anxiety or does anxiety have you Mm. you know so this is you know this is a it's interesting that you brought that up because at the very beginning of my program I implement for my clients like a tool for them to use right and it's used for them to track their feelings right and ah. the circumstances surrounding them yeah I think we've, we talked about we this, talk about this yeah. but yeah. it's it's great to understand I think because you're right, I think a lot of people are just like either shoving shit down or on autopilot right. or just like, hey, whatever, yeah. get out of here. Okay. I don't need to deal with that yeah. right now. Yeah. But if even just being aware yeah. of the feelings yeah. that you have yes. is a huge step in the right direction. Yep. And as a byproduct, it's a great way to identify triggers. Yeah. yeah. And when you identify the triggers, mm-hmm you can start to set boundaries. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Yep. And it's... Yeah. Yeah. And when you identify triggers, like, to take that an opposite route, though, that's... Those are huge catalysts to spiritual awakening. Arguably, those are the only catalysts to spiritual awakening. You know? What? Triggers. Yeah, well, I meant, like, in... Well, I guess it also applies, but I meant, like, in the example you were just using yeah. with this mm-hmm. person that mm-hmm. we mutually know. Mm-hmm. Let's say it's, um, let's say it's, uh, the, the place they live or the environment that they work in or whatever, or someone that they hang out with that they always get anxious when they're around this person, you know, track and see where you, and that's that's where the the boundaries come up yeah. it's like yeah. every time i'm at this place i feel like off yeah or like every time i'm around this person yeah i get a weird feeling right you know right. and it's like cool let's like for one like take it a little bit like a little step further than like weird like right. let's really try to identify what it is right. and why yeah. and then you are now aware that You've narrowed it down. Yes. Anxiety largely is like unanswered questions yeah. and hypotheticals and like, like yeah. what's going on? I don't know what's going to happen. I can't control anything. Right. Let's pinpoint it. Right. And take it one by one. Yeah. Like this is 
why I'm feeling this way. Cool. How can we rectify that? Right. On to the next one. Yeah. Right. And it's yeah. just step by yeah, step. That's a good point. And I, I and being more like simplifying it and making it smaller than it seems in your head. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's a good point because like I've struggled with anxiety for a while too and it wasn't until I like understood why and I could pinpoint the exact places that I began mm-hmm. to learn how to overcome it and be like, oh okay, like I have anxiety around X, Y, Z. Well like what is X? Why do I have anxiety around it? Mm-hmm. Like what how, what are the ways that I can change that? Is it a matter of removing people from my life or this person from my life? Is it a matter of the environment I'm in? Is mm-hmm. it a matter of something I don't accept about myself or know about myself? Mm-hmm. Um, is it like any of those things? It could be a variety of things, but understanding what it is, pinpointing that one problem, and then turning, like flipping the script and saying like, okay, I have anxiety around this problem, but how can I reframe my belief system to understand that this is not a problem? Or, that's that's huge, yeah. right? But maybe it legitimately is a problem. Maybe it's a problem. Like if it's yeah. like if it's a, a a certain person, right? That is a yeah, yeah, yeah. bad energy, negative influence, right. whatever. Like, right. but now you know, right? Because sometimes you don't recognize that people are like that. Yeah. Maybe you've been friends with them for a long time. Yeah, and you're yeah. Just like, yeah. You just thought like you just had anxiety, right? But it's like maybe it's because every single time you see this person, yeah. It's just draining you yeah. and you feel yeah. off. And like right. when you identify it, you're like, oh shit, okay. Maybe I'm gonna limit my interaction with this person. Right. Like let's right. cut it down like seventy five percent. Yeah, and see how you feel. See how you feel. Yeah. Right. You know? And it's right. it's so a lot of trial and error and I've always a had a question around that because like they say relationships and the people in your life, like are the people that you attract into your life are a reflection of you, a mirror reflection of you. You know, like mm-hmm. your relationships are a mirror reflection of you. And I've always been like kind of confused about that. Uh, because they say like if you want to know your where you lack, like look at your partner and see where they lack. Because that's a mirror reflection of where you lack. Mm-hmm. And it's like mm, just super interesting. And not just your partner, but your friends, your colleague, people that you surround yourself with and have relationships in any aspect with. So you're saying that where you lack your friend or significant other they also lack but it's easier to see because it's somebody else precisely and that like that you should evaluate all of your relationships because they are exactly that they're just a mirror it's kind of like your judgments and opinions of others are a mirror of what you don't accept in yourself you know ah that's a tough one bro it's because a really tough one. i my experience, like I was, I was in a really long term relationship, right. and I had some shortcomings where I wasn't like, for one, I wasn't able to communicate my emotions at all. Like, right. I was not at that point in my life, but you know, there were things that, like, I would lie, yeah, and I would. Just like think of like, I don't know, we'll use those two examples. Mm-hmm. Wasn't able to communicate my, my emotions and I would lie. On the other hand, this person that I was with was super honest mm-hmm. and was, I would say, higher up on the communication ladder than mm-hmm. I was. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's interesting because as you laid out like your relationships are a mirror of you yeah but what about like the massively overused phrase of like opposites attract right how do those coexist this is all my this is like my whole lingering question around this is i was in a relationship for a long time as well and you know as the relationship progressed i realized that like i'm growing more than this person Mm-hmm. And like I don't want to say that I'm better than this person because better is subjective, but like there are certain areas of life that the characteristics that I've held were more effective to living a higher quality of life, and those characteristics did not exist in my partner. 
Mm. So like, I struggle with that because of that reason. Like I didn't see myself in my partner. I saw kind of like a stranger. It was like, I've been making steps and moving forward. I'm, I'm trying to better myself in, mm -hmm. in different ways, shapes and forms. And this person isn't making any progress. In fact, mm -hmm. they're, they're regressing to like patterns of behavior that aren't helpful for them. And mm -hmm. I'm not doing those things. So like the areas that they're lacking, like let's say financially, they had no financial knowledge and were trying to save money at all. And I was like putting money away and saving and spending less and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. It's like those things were not a mirror, you know? Right. It's almost like you said, opposite. Mm -hmm. It's so like I, I have this, and I don't know why I brought this up, but it's something that's always lingered in my mind. It's like I have this this kind of block against that because it's like that's never been my the, the case. Right? Well, it probably has in some situations for sure, but like mm -hmm. some of my longest term relationships and relationships where I've invested most of myself, the reason that it split and ended was either because like I felt I needed to work on myself and I couldn't in the relationship or I was outgrowing the other person, mm. you know? And the differences were getting wider and the gap was getting wider. Do you believe in this concept of the mirror? Do you really, do you? I, I believe it in every other aspect. Mm. Every other aspect. Mm -hmm. Like I know, cause I know for a fact that like your fears and judgments and opinions are just a mere reflection of you. Those are things right, that you like haven't accepted by yourself. Your internal, internal. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So like whatever you haven't accepted on the, on the outside world are things that you haven't accepted by yourself. Mm. Okay, so in that sense, like 100% on board, totally agreed, understood. But it's for me, it's hard to, to take that same theory, that same philosophy and apply it to my relationships because there's friends that I associate with, people that I hang out with every so often just because we've been friends for a while and like, they're good people, you know, they have good intentions. Mm -hmm. They're not bad people doing bad things. We're at different levels in life, mm -hmm. but they're not inherently bad people. And I, I limit the amount of time I spend around them, but I don't see them as a mirror. I don't like, I, mm -hmm. I consciously know that they're not me, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm aware of that, which is why I limit my time and why it's like, I keep them at a distance arm's length, you know, because mm -hmm. I know that they're not me. So it's like, that's confusing for me. I don't know. <laughs> I can't piece this. This is so multifaceted. Okay, yeah. so. I'm coming to the relationship expert. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. Yeah, so, yeah. I also believe that the internal dictates the external. For sure. Except for relationships. Uh, this is a crazy anomaly, right? Yeah, because yeah. in your life, have you ever been like, actively like looking for a relationship and then as soon as you stop fucking looking boom there it is so like the whole concept yes. of like yes manifestation yeah, yeah, and like yeah speaking into existence right. some for some reason and this yeah. is just my experience yeah, yeah. for some reason that yeah. shit does not work yeah with specifically for me yeah romantic relationships yeah, i hear you on right that. so like i hear you on that i'll fucking like okay prime example when i took this year off yeah. for myself right i was like kind of waiting for somebody for a yeah. little while you yeah. know and then like she didn't work out right yeah. and then but throughout this time i was like also like solely dedicated to like making myself better mm -hmm. and the main motivation at that point was well the initial motivation was like financial yeah but i i also like stopped hanging out with pretty much anybody right. you know and i was working all the time and and just kind of keeping it to myself and trying to like work through my own stuff right right, right. And as time went on, I was less and less interested in like trying to find somebody right. to date. Because in the back of my mind, you know, at that point I was, how old was I? 26 for the first half of the year and 27 for the second half of the year. Right. And that's like 
prime time to like want to engage yeah. in a yeah, relationship yeah, and like yeah. specifically yeah. like sexual activity right. or like you're right. like yeah. it's hard to it's hard to ignore that yeah, yeah. you know but you know as time went on I was like okay I'm just gonna stop worrying about it at all right it was like on my radar a little bit yeah. but like yeah. I would say it was on my radar like 10% of the time. Yeah. And the rest yeah. of the time it was like, I'm doing me like right. everybody else. Right. And then once I said like, fuck it, I'm not like, I'm not worried about anything else. Right. Holy, like wholeheartedly. Like yeah. now that 10% is gone. Right. Right. In walks Kayla. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy because yeah. I think it goes back not to interrupt you, but like I think it goes back to this philosophy of like needing nothing attracts everything. Mm-hmm. And so like the moment you decide you don't need that anymore, all of a sudden it's there, it's available, and the universe is like, "Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Are you sure? I'm gonna test you right now. Do you not need this?" And it's like, "Well, maybe I do." <laughs> you know? Or it's like maybe I want. But then like then it seems like the perfect scenario. You know, it's like it was just presented out of nowhere, and it's like oh, well, like, I wasn't looking, I don't need this, and, like, here it is in front of me, so, like, mm-hmm. it could be, this could be a sign that I should be, you know? Yeah. Um, the, the other, the other thing that, the other, like, important thing to note there was, yeah. I almost moved to North Carolina. Right. Like, I put in a transfer request yeah. with Costco. Yeah. They accepted that transfer request. Yeah. I went out there for a week. Yeah. And then I decided, like, ugh, yeah. What's the doesn't quite feel right. I'm not going to go. Right. And then a month later, yeah. here's, yeah. you know. Yeah. I know, and I so, hear you, man. So there's and, things that you just but, can't ignore. You know? and, and, but to, to bring it back around to, like, the, the mirror aspect, um, she's super emotionally mature right whereas like i'm like just surpassing like toddler years <laughs> you know <laughs> so like like she's full-grown adult yeah, yeah yeah and i'm like fuck yeah yeah i'm trying to catch up yeah you know yeah and so but there's a, but and this is like goes back to like robert keegan like yeah some people are higher than others at different yeah. words it's a fluid it's scale. Right. It's fluid and so... Scale. Well, also, as you mentioned earlier, like, the people who go through the most stuff are the ones that are most mature or experienced in that area. Right. And she's been through some serious emotional stuff. Right. And so, she's, it's... I don't think that there's a right answer. Yeah. I think that, again, bringing it back to, like, the anxiety thing, like, listen. Right to what your body and mind are telling you yep. about things in your life right. and do what's best for you. But as far as the manifestation thing, like I think it's a hundred percent true for, and I've, and this is just my experience because, um, Matthias, he, like put thought and effort into like who is my ideal partner yeah boom 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 yeah. and fucking manifested yeah. and manifested and yeah. visualized it and then boom yeah there she is yeah i think it's possible either way however yeah i think it is again my opinion stuff like that comes along when you least expect it sure and it's not that when somebody pops up, it's like, holy shit. Yeah. I found the Holy Grail. Yeah. This is the best person on the on the face of the fucking planet right. and right. happily ever after. Yeah. It just means that they're supposed to be there at that point at in your life. Point in time. You know? And so Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. It's it's not necessarily a permanent thing. It's more so like this person has something to offer to your life at this point in time. Right. Yeah. And maybe yeah. like on their end, like maybe yeah. Vice versa. Right. Yeah. Vice versa. Yeah. Perfect. I was going to try and like, <laughs> I was going to butcher something that's two <laughs> words. <laughs> the, um, who was it that, there's someone that has a quote and 
it's like an author and he's making fun of another author I think and he's like the poor guy like he thinks that big word big words convey big emotions mm. it's like ah sometimes the simplest things yeah man get your, get your point across you know for sure anyway a little tidbit so yeah I don't know if well that's a good point man that's a good point I, I like that I, I like that concept and that idea that like the, the relationship philosophy you know it comes and goes and you can you can take that and leave it if you want um but people are brought into your life at specific points in time to teach you something mm -hmm. about yourself, about your environment, about what you want, what you don't want, so on and so forth. Right. And this and that concept yeah. is not only applied to like a significant other. Right. No, relationships in general. Relationships yeah. in general. Yeah. And so yeah. even like, like throughout my life, I've had many jobs. I right. would say like more jobs than the average person. Yeah. And the average person my age. But I've had also that many managers yeah. and bosses. Yeah. And they all suck. <laughs> the far majority of them. Yeah, they do. You know? yeah, I hear you, I hear you. And so I've learned, like, at least in my understanding of the world, yeah. what works and what doesn't right. in that right. aspect. Yep. And so I'm able to, and I'm not saying that, like, I'm not in any form of, like, managerial role right. right now but I feel as though because of these experiences I now know what not to do mm -hmm. and in turn like I now know what to do to mm -hmm. best mm -hmm. connect with people and have them feel understood mm -hmm. and comfortable expressing themselves mm -hmm. because I've had people at, in the workplace where like I go to somebody with a problem and they're like, what do you want me to do about yeah, it? Or like, yeah. but it's just not a positive right. reaction right. on their end, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And so, and this is, you know, with the hardest ones are with the family, yeah. you know, because you can, yeah. let's say that it's an unhealthy relationship. Like right. you can, you cut off a friend. Yeah. You can quit a job. You yeah. can break up with somebody. Right. But, but your family's your family. Fuck, man. Yeah. Like. Family's family. You know, and this yeah. is something that like I've understood on being the person that is like cut out, like my mom doing like the tough love thing and like kicking me out and right. saying like, don't come near me, don't talk to me, right. get out of my house. Right. Right. And being like the toxic person right. in the family dynamic, right. sometimes it's necessary yeah. Yeah. to put up that wall and be yeah. like, you're not allowed for sure. For sure. to yeah. get near me because right. I can't take on whatever you have going on right. right now. And like you're at some point you've got to take accountability and responsibility. Right. At some point you've got to figure it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think a big, here's a big thing that I think parents don't realize is that if you are one of the people that take your children back in every time they make a mistake, a big mistake, if you're someone that thinks like, no, I need to always be there for my children. I can't let them down. Like I, I can't, like I have to be there fail safe. You know, if, I'll never let them like fall flat on their face. Mm. You're not teaching your child anything valuable by doing so. You're not teaching them anything that's, that's going to prepare them for life. They're just going to think, oh, if anything bad happens, I always have a way out. Instead of taking responsibility for their actions and disciplining themselves and learning how to take action themselves. Mm. And the only way for them to do that is to be completely independent Mm -hmm. And if that requires them to be homeless or whatever it is at the time, you know, they can, they'll blame you for so long for their problems until they fucking realize that like their life is on them, you mm -hmm. know? And so as much as I get it, like you never want to see your kids fail as much as I understand, like it would crush you to see your daughter or son walking homeless down the street at the same time, you have to do what you can, number one, to prepare them for the world while they're young and to prepare them to take accountability and responsibility while they're young and number two, you have to let them fail. Because mm -hmm. if, if they don't ever fail, they don't know how to succeed, mm -hmm. period. They'll never be able to like gain the tools necessary to be a successful person in life. And success in whatever way you want to define it, being a good father, being a good teacher, worker, whatever it is, not just mm -hmm. materialistically. But a lot of parents that I know are just like, I would never let that happen to my child. And I'm like, maybe you should. Maybe that's why your child is fucked up. Because mm -hmm. you're not allowing them to hit rock bottom. You're not allowing them to experience things they need to experience that are going to equip them for life. Mm. Like, you you learn real quick 
how to manage your finances when you're broke as fuck. Yeah. Like, you learn you either that or you just continue on a fucking path of destruction, of broke as fuck destruction. Right. And, like, you don't ever figure it out. But then that's your choice. That's your responsibility, your accountability, you know? Mm-hmm. But you usually will learn really fucking quickly if you have any wits about you how to do something when you're in such dire straits that without that thing you might die you know yeah well, and that, so, that brings it to like you know the the uncomfortability of change right like that that's the motivating factor like are you so uncomfortable with where you're at right. that you're willing to subject yourself to the discomfort of change yes. to get out of where you are? Yes. And like I've experienced that like when when you and I moved in our first apartment together, yep. I got kicked out right. and I was like sleeping in my car yeah. and then I asked to sleep at your house yeah. and your stepdad said, fuck no. Yeah. And... So I was like homeless basically for like almost a month until yeah. we got that apartment. But I was like, okay, like how am I going to figure this out? Right. Cause I got to go to work and I yeah. can't like not shower right. and I need money for like a deposit for an apartment. I need right. to be able to pay rent. Right. I'm like, I have to figure it out. Right. And I figured it out. Yeah. You know, yeah. it wasn't the most ideal situation, but yeah. like I made it work. Right. And so. And that's the thing. You either make it work or you fall from the flat on your face. Right. Yeah. In which case, you, you know what not to do next exactly. time. Exactly. It's the concept of like you either win or you learn. You know? Right. There is no loss. Mm-hmm. The only loss is if you give up. Right. When you decide like, oh, I've had enough. This mm-hmm. is it for me. That's when you lose. That's when you lose. But if you decide like, damn, that was a fucked up situation, but I learned something from it, and now I can grow. Now I can be better. Now I can do better. Mm-hmm. You know? But you'll never know that. You'll never know what you can withstand if you if you don't put yourself through it, you know? Very true. You'll get in the trenches and figure the fuck out for your own self. So That's the way to do it. That's life. <laughs> that's life. That's all people say. <laughs> Flying high in April, shot down in May. <laughs> it's a good song. Alright, my friend. Just wanna wrap it up? Well, yep. Sounds good. Any final thoughts for the viewers? Final thoughts, man. I got two. Okay. One. If you feel as though there's someone in your life that you need to have a conversation with that you know it's going to be uncomfortable, mm-hmm. you should have that conversation. Mm-hmm. This is really like me trying to convince myself because <laughs> yeah. I need to have yeah, a conversation yeah. with my dad. But saying it out loud. Saying it out loud, right? And it applies to fucking everybody because I can guarantee that just about everybody has like something that they probably should say to somebody that they're putting off or they're avoiding or they're ignoring. Second, the most important relationship that you have is the one you have with yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you can understand yourself on a deeper level Mm -hmm. every single relationship you have and will have in the future will benefit from it yeah that's a good point those are both phenomenal points i think my my point of the week something i went through this week is like i'm i'm well actually last week excuse me it's on tuesday uh i'm overly self-critical like intensely self-critical just it's terrible it's bad so one thing that i learned that somebody told me was like be graceful with yourself Mm. like it's hard to kill your old self and it doesn't happen overnight and so like if you fall back into patterns and loops of what you had previously been doing be graceful with yourself accept those things and love yourself regardless of that that's a hard thing for me to do because when i feel like i'm making progress and then i take a step back i'm like fuck dude i've been it, feeling like that lately so yeah. thank you for saying yeah that. <laughs> so like have grace with yourself you know grace is necessary it's needed mm. and you can't kill your old self overnight mm. so it's a work in progress everybody is i'll end it there all right cheers brother
Cheers to you. Number two, but I don't know. <laughs> I have my friends. All right. Signing out.